especially as we head through the rest of the day and even into this evening as well as into the night tonight. That's where we'll have the opportunity to have some clearing uh, again once we get into the early parts of tomorrow morning. But the latest forecast advisory eventually by this evening we'll see the center of circulation close to Hilton Head and then from there that's where we'll continue to see the cone or the storm itself build through the coastline and the low country eventually by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning it'll be off the coastline to the south and east of Wilmington and then from there we'll eventually see this system start to uh, move farther into the Atlantic. But once we get into this evening and into the overnight hours, that's where we'll have impacts mainly the strongest of winds near Hilton Head, Charleston, as well as into Myrtle Beach. And then from there, that's where we'll start to see this system curve out into the Atlantic Ocean. And especially once we get into Labor Day weekend, the only worries we'll have with Edalia will be some leftover rip currents all along the eastern seaboard. So here's a look at some of the impacts that we'll be expecting from today right now, pretty much through the rest of the afternoon, evening and into the overnight hours. One of the main concerns that we're going to have are going to be some very heavy rain at times. Of course, that'll lead to some localized flash flooding. If you have some typical flood prone spots that you normally see ponding from a normal summertime thunderstorm, then expect for some type of ponding or flooding to occur in this same area as we get these outer bands in the core of Edalia to move towards the Palmetto State. Also, gusty winds are going to be possible with this system especially as it builds closer to us around the Midlands. We could get winds that could gust as high as 40 to 65 miles per hour, though I'd say the 50 and 60 mile per hour gusts are going to be a little more concentrated farther to the south and east near places like Clarendon and Orangeburg counties. And then once we get into the latter parts of the day as well, especially closer to one, two and three o'clock this afternoon, we will have the opportunity at a brief tornado or two. So we'll need to keep an eye out for tornado tornado warnings again, though our tornado threat is mainly going to be concentrated south and east of Columbia towards the low country and coastline, but certainly some counties like Orangeburg and Clarendon County have the opportunity to pick up on a tornado warning and that really starts to ramp up, especially I think once we get closer to the six o'clock hour, that'll be where we have the peak of our heaviest of rain. That'll also be the peak to where we could really start to see some flash flooding across the Midlands, and that'll also be the opportunity for us to to pick up on some of our stronger wind gusts again anywhere from 40 to 60 miles per hour with the wind gusts of 50 to 60 miles per hour more likely the closer you are to the coastline and then with the added pace to Edalia as a system as a whole it looks like by tomorrow morning especially once we get past sunrise and move towards lunchtime it'll be smooth sailing still breezy on the back side of the system but we'll start to get some clearing and filter in some sunshine out there as well and this is another update we got just before we broke into coverage tropical Storm warnings expanded to include almost the entire Midlands. I know a little earlier we had tropical storm watches in place for Lexington, Richland and Lee counties that now is a, under a tropical storm warning and that means tropical storm force winds are likely at some point through the rest of the afternoon and into this evening throughout Lexington and Richland counties closer to the 40 or 50 mile per hour threshold. And then as you move farther to the south and east, especially once you're getting into the low country and the coastline, that's where the gusts are a little more likely to get to 50 or even 60 and 65 miles per hour. We've got team coverage all morning. Meteorologist Tony Shivaroli is in studio with me and Tony really over the next couple of hours, we're going to start to see our conditions deteriorate, especially as heavy rain starts to build in across the region. Uh, Chandler, you know what, man, as we continue to give you that live check on what we're going to seeing with the system again, Idalia continuing to push up towards the Palmetto State. Obviously, still so much going on down in Florida. The intense landfall getting into North Florida, Southern Georgia, a lot of heavy rainfall right now. That's going to be pushing up towards us. You got to give it a couple hours, though, before we really start to see the heavy stuff. We're just working to really get you prepared. Our team has you covered throughout the entirety of this day. Let's see the current track. How this is likely going to be continuing to progress forward as we really work to settle in here. So we continue to take that check as we go towards 1 2 p.m. Likely seeing more of these rainfall totals on the up and up in an impressive sense. And of course, as we're seeing now more from similar thoughts of the National Weather Service extending that tropical storm warning, getting further into counties such as Richland and Lexington. 
Now, closer to the upstate, likely going to be seeing things, you know, consistently calmer. But basically, from any point of even eastern sections of Newberry and Saluda County over, we're going to be getting more of these impacts. So we get towards 1, 2 p.m., ramping things up towards 4 to 5 p.m., still really holding steady with a lot of this heavy rainfall and embedded in everything will be, of course, some very gusty wind speeds. Yes, that'll be isolated at times, especially with anything in the way of tornado threats, but it will be possible. You have to be on your toes if you make the choice to have any later afternoon travels getting into the evening hours because that's going to be the sweet spot for this system for our neck of the woods as we press on through this day. So we see everything, of course, really trying to come at us, swallowing up South Carolina before finally working to dissipate a little bit where I'm standing right now towards the western portion of our viewing area towards the upstate and still trying to cling on desperately towards areas over here towards the east and obviously over to the coast of South Carolina where there's still going to be slightly higher chances of more storm impacts more in the way of of course still a little bit of a storm surge as this works its way out towards the east but also of course any tornadic threats Either way you slice it, it's going to be a time during the day. You have to stay weather aware. And I advise you, of course, if you don't have to make travels this afternoon, you don't have somewhere you truly need to be, you stay inside. You stay with us. You stay safe. As we go on into Thursday morning, very early Thursday morning, we're working to see now with more of this slightly sped up projection of Idalia to continue to dry out and here we go getting towards really two, three in the morning, obviously five, six, seven. How about 8 a.m. sunshine working to return? This is going to be a true calm after the storm where we're working to dry up. The sun going to be doing its job evaporating any moisture that we have picked up during the day. It'll give us a lot of, of a you know bigger time frame where we can, of course, Enjoy it, and obviously those who perhaps went through some storm damage, you can you know go forward, analyze that a bit, pick up the pieces, and go forward with the plan that you need to do without having to worry about any other severe weather threats. We go into this afternoon, Thursday evening, overnight, all the way through Friday, and guess what? Your Labor Day weekend as well. It's going to be smooth sailing. Excited to give you an update on that too. As we see those rainfall totals, this is something that is, of course, still continued on with a good bit of consistency into the day. But I would still not be surprised. We see a little bit more of some of these totals, even one to two inches, pushing over towards Newberry and Saluda a bit. But still, it's the higher threat totals that we're thinking about and we're a little bit more worried about where we could see some of these isolated flash flooding threats. And that's where, of course, you're seeing more of the general three to four inch range, but even as high as five to six between Lexington, Richland counties, over to counties such as Clarence and in Orangeburg, where we're going to be picking up a little bit more of those heavy downpours, getting, of course, more of the heavier bands of the system as opposed to what we're seeing right now, where things are relatively light. So isolated flash flooding, the main risk to watch out for as we get towards the PM hours, picking up those, of course, heavy rainfall totals, and that's just coupled along with some potential tropical storm force winds. So we go forward into the flood safety, you know, the in general, how, of course, this could be affecting you. You come upon a flooded road, you don't drive through it, which is why I advise, of course, to not be out driving this anyway if you don't have to be. But if you do, you make that choice. Six inches of moving water could easily knock a person off their feet. And then, of course, one foot of water can float a car. It doesn't take much. You know, I've seen some flash flooding instances before. You know, they, of course, weren't even as intense as some tropical storms could cause. You know, yes, easy to float a car. Once, of course, that buoyant force gets under a vehicle, pushes it up. You don't want to be stuck in something like that. Of course, this is not saying it's going to be happening with certainty. But it's not impossible. Flash flooding is, you know, like a flash, happens quick. You got to be mindful of this. And if you are a flood prone area, you need to be thinking about this. As we get past, of course, our threat window today, we are going to see more in the way of this first alert weather day coming to an end late overnight. And then early Thursday, we just work to see a few lasting showers, some breezy conditions, calmer weather situations await as we get on forward into, of course, any plans you have later on Thursday, Friday into a fantastic Labor Day weekend. So we still got to get through, of course, this Wednesday together as we're working to see Idalia pushing closer to the Midlands. We have, of course, more updates coming for, up for you on a WIS News midday. Right now, it's back to your regularly scheduled programming.